show me your original face, the face you had before your parents were born. This Zen koan hides great wisdom, which, when you understand it, the entire universe and absolute truth are revealed to you. Stay until the end to unveil your true face. In the realm of philosophy and spirituality, there is discussion about the existence of states of consciousness beyond ordinary experience. In addition to the three commonly recognized states of waking, dreaming and deep sleep, there is the existence of a fourth state known as Turiya in Hindu philosophy. This state is described as a state of awakening that transcends the other three, an experience said to be deeper than the deepest sleep and yet more aware than the waking state. In this context, figures like Ramana Maharshi have used terms like wakeful sleep to describe this particular state of consciousness. Those who experience the fourth state, even for a brief moment, come to understand the connection between their own immutable being, called Atman, and the ultimate essence of the universe, known as Brahman, or the Self. This state offers a profound revelation of this essential identity. In reality, this fourth state is the only true state. The other three states we have mentioned arise from an illusion, called Maya, and only appear due to the ignorance that clouds the individual's perception. When this ignorance is overcome, a state of pure consciousness is revealed that transcends the limited, fragmented self. This state is characterized by a knowledge free from thoughts and representations, resembling what is commonly understood as samadhi, or enlightenment. Understanding this fourth state, called Turiya, originates directly from Atman, often called the witness. In this state, the activity of the cognitive mind stops and the sense of the observing self disappears. Instead, pure consciousness shines on its own, without perception of internal or external objects. As described by San Juan de la Cruz, transcending all science, which means transcending all knowledge. Is there any clue or experience that allows us to approach that fourth state called Turiya, taught by yogis and rishis empirically? The ultimate goal of yoga is the cessation of mental fluctuations. This aspiration is equivalent to what Vedanta calls moksha, Buddhism's nirvana, Zen's satori, and what they all understand more broadly as samadhi. But what exactly do these mental fluctuations that yoga seeks to stop refer to? Current science establishes that brain activity occurs by virtue of patterns of bioelectric oscillations and that these waves basically present five different rhythms or frequencies. All psychologists and neurologists currently admit that, depending on whether consciousness operates in one or another of such brain rhythms, the individual feels more or less agitated and, what is more significant, has a different experience of time. Neuronal activity exhibits five basic patterns of oscillatory frequency, classified as brainwaves, gamma, at an approximate frequency of 30 to 100 hertz, beta, from 14 to 30 hertz, alpha, from 8 to 13 hertz, theta, from 4 to 7 hertz, and delta from 0.5 to 3 hertz. Each of these patterns can be identified with different levels of consciousness activity. We can understand that our conscious experience is related to patterns of brainwave frequency. These patterns can be influenced, calmed, and even stopped through specific practices, such as controlling breathing, focusing on a point, or reducing rational mental activity among other techniques. The constant agitation of our mind reveals an inexhaustible capacity for questioning and exploration. When we direct this capacity inward and immerse ourselves in the nature and origin of our own consciousness, this deep search can lead us to total mental calmness, to the cessation of mental oscillations. 
This approach is formally known as the path of knowledge or the investigation of being in the Vedantic tradition, which leads us to experience reality directly. When we manage to stop mental fluctuations, we experience pure consciousness, chit, and achieve a deep realization of the real, a sense of intimate bliss, ananda. This state is known as samadhi by ancient sages. They poetically described it as the union between the individual self, Atman, and the ultimate reality, Brahman, that is, the union, yoga, between the deep nature of the individual and the ultimate reality, the self, Sat. Sat, Chit, Ananda. It is important to point out that this union does not imply that consciousness moves towards any particular object, but simply stops, and with it, the illusory representation of the individual self disappears. Thus, by immersing oneself in Atman, like a turbulent river merges into the serene ocean, the individual self dissolves into Brahman, into wholeness. In a certain way, the state of Turiya always seems to be beyond our reach, as we define ourselves as individuals, as egos experiencing the world separately. These traditions suggest that we limit our understanding by identifying with a specific mode of perception, especially with the subject-object perception that characterizes our experience in both waking and dreaming states. We fail to recognize that appearances are not really out there or separate from us, but are part of our own mind, which has no defined boundaries. These perceived boundaries arise from the way we perceive the world. When we change our way of perceiving, not only does our perception of the world change, but also our own identity. By clinging to a concept of ourselves, everything else becomes unconscious and the world becomes a collection of lifeless objects. Even our dreams are often unconscious in many cases. However, if we consider the notion of Turiya, we realize that there is actually no unconsciousness in an absolute sense. Beyond our identification with different forms of perception, there is a conscious witness that encompasses everything. Everything is part of its being. The fourth state represents the omnipresence of this witnessing consciousness, which integrates and unifies the other three states. It is our true self, the Atman or immortal soul, the eternal consciousness. It is the immutable and permanent self that observes all our changing selves. We can mention that Turiya is equivalent to the pristine and natural state of consciousness, which is sometimes translated as primordial gnosis. All traditions derived from Indian philosophy agree that the nature of consciousness, beyond identification with an individual and subject-object division, is continuous bliss or limitless luminosity. Everything else changes, everything appears and disappears, and only consciousness, the luminous non-dual bliss, remains. In this state, distinctions fade away, and dreaming and waking merge into a continuum. Although the fourth state may seem like a distant achievement only for the most advanced, according to these teachings, there is nothing more intimate and close than this. It is the natural state, free from concepts, beyond conceptualization and identification, reality in all its purity and splendor. Regardless of whether we are awake or asleep, there is in us a type of consciousness that remains essentially constant. In both states, there is a sense of being awake or conscious. In a way, we are the same consciousness, the same identity, the same I am, whether awake or asleep. This means that there is something that is immutable and remains constant, regardless of our waking or dreaming state. This sense of identity, this consciousness, is very different from that which characterizes the ego normally associated with our physical body during ordinary waking state. There is something deeper happening here. What is it really about? What is happening is that we are approaching our true self, 
our authentic identity, what Zen describes as our original face and the Sufis call the supreme identity. According to all the great spiritual traditions, this self is one with the spirit or the ultimate reality. This implies that our true self, as we will soon see, is timeless, eternal, unborn and immortal. It is not subject to the flow of time. This means that even before the birth of our parents, before the birth of the universe and even before the emergence of time as we know it, we already possessed our true self. This is because being a timeless moment and an eternal consciousness, our true self is not subject to the flow of time. This timeless eternity becomes more evident as we approach the center of our being, the empty witness, our true self, and the consciousness of non-dual unity, which is the union of our true self with the spirit and with the entire universe. It is important to remember that when we speak of eternal or timeless, we do not refer to infinite time, but to a timeless moment, a now or a timeless present. As Ludwig Wittgenstein said, if we understand eternity to mean a timeless or timeless moment, eternal life belongs to those who live in the present. We will soon see how our true self is directly connected to this timeless moment. As you delve deeper into the practice of meditation and move from a state of light sleep to a higher state, you will notice that your mental focus gradually changes. You will move into a deeper state, which belongs to the pure, formless and dreamless causal realm, plunging into a state of deep dreamless sleep with an extremely subtle consciousness that remains present. In this state, you will realize that, although there is very little content, as it is a dreamless and formless state, you still exist. Yet, you will experience a very subtle degree of consciousness or pure awakening, and you will feel yourself in the same way as you do when there are objects present. Those who reach this level of consciousness show a very characteristic pattern of brain waves, deep delta waves, typical of deep dreamless sleep, combined with alpha waves, typical of the waking state. This suggests the simultaneous presence of both states, indicating that in these individuals, there is an awakening in the state of dreamless sleep. They are fully aware of themselves, fully awake, but at the same time, their entire organism is deeply asleep. This state clearly explains the sensation of a self, which does not depend on identification with any object or with its own body, but is radically free, liberated and emancipated. It is a self very close to that original face that you have been since before your parents were born, before the Big Bang, before time, a self alien to suffering, anxiety, fear, desire, attachment and hatred. An open, clear, free, transparent and spacious self, a real self, one with the spirit, with the cosmos and with the totality. Remember the Zen Koan I mentioned at the beginning. Show me your original face, the face you had before your parents were born. The self you had before your parents were born? Yes, and this is something that Zen takes very seriously and literally, but not as a metaphor or symbol, because if you understand it correctly, it is something you can experience directly. Your original face is the true self, the witness, the real seer that existed before our parents were born simply because it has never entered the stream of time. It exists in the timeless now. It is aware of passing time, but as it is outside of time, it is timeless. That is precisely what the witness does, perfectly witnessing all the objects, events and things that emerge in this immense and empty opening that is now. Christ said, before Abraham was, I am, something completely true. And in the same way, God said, I am that I am. That I am 
the pure, direct and immediate feeling of I am, not that I am this or that, but the pure, direct and immediate feeling of I am, is timeless, eternal. The original face you had before your parents were born, before the universe was born, before time was born, right now. It is exactly the same I am that, at this very moment, you are experiencing. Are you aware of that, isn't it? It is what we have always been, what we are at this moment, and what we will be forever.